My name is Miriam Catcher and today I'll be introducing you to the Baroque Flute, otherwise known as the Traverso. The physics behind the Baroque Flute are pretty much the same as any other type of flute. You make an embouchure, blow air into the hole at the top and cover the other holes with your fingers to change the pitch. However, there are some major differences between this flute and its more shiny and um, modern version that's popular in classical music today. If you're from Ireland, then you're probably familiar with the look of this flute because it's very similar to the Irish traditional flute. And these kind of flutes were um, in use all throughout Europe um, from the end of the 17th century all through the 18th century. So composers like Bach, Telemann and Handel would have written their music for this flute. obvious difference between the Baroque flute and its modern counterpart is the material that it's made from. My flute is made out of granadilla wood and it's, it's a copy of an old historical instrument. Um, other flutes can be made out of boxwood and in the past some makers also used ivory. Whereas the modern flute um, nowadays is mainly made using silver, gold or platinum. And the wood gives this flute a very beautiful, warm, mellow sound. It's a simple system flute, as opposed to the boom system, which was developed in the 19th century. The Brock flute has six finger holes, one little hole at the end with a silver key, and nothing for your thumb at the back. As the 18th century went on, people started adding more keys to it. So there are flutes with two, four, six, eight keys, but the core structure remained the same all the way through to the middle of the 19th century. So it's what was known as the flute to Mozart, Beethoven, Schubert or Schumann. Um, on the other hand, the modern boom system flute has 18 keys um, and all sorts of springs, screws and levers all over the place. Um, now, a simple system means that the mechanism itself is less complex, but it doesn't imply that operating this mechanism is simpler. In fact, because we don't have a key for every single note, we have to use much more complicated fingerings to achieve a full chromatic scale. Um, so, if you lift up your fingers one by one, you get D major, um, and to produce any other notes other than D major, you'll have to use these cross fingerings. Um, and these cross finger notes are part of what gives the flute, the Baroque flute, its unique sound. So they are of a much more fragile um, nature because they don't have a regular harmonic series. And they give, this gives them a very different kind of color, almost like a pastel shade to it. And that in turn, um, makes every key on the flute slightly different in character. Um, so tonalities like D major, G major, B minor um, would be very open, bright, highly saturated keys, while C minor with a lot of cross-fingered notes in it um, would, have, would have a lot more of a pastel shading to it. For instance, here is a little bit of D major. in C minor.
lowest naturally produced note on the Baroque flute is D just below the stave, and the highest note is A3. And it has a smaller sound uh, compared to the modern flute. However, when it was first invented, it was praised for its dynamic um, range. And it's beautifully complemented by other historical instruments like the lute or Baroque strings, which all have a slightly more subtle quality than their modern counterparts. So I played the silver flute before ever laying my hands on one of these and I've always been fascinated by early music and um, Baroque repertoire in particular. I just found it really fun to play. Um, and yeah, so when an opportunity arose, I thought I have to have a go at trying some of these pieces on the instrument that it was originally intended for. Um, I was actually friends with a recording player at the time as well, still friends with her. Um, but one of the pieces I really wanted to play was the flute and recording concerto by Telemann, which has a really wild and um, fun last movement. My favourite thing about the Traverso is the variety of beautiful sounds that it can produce. Um, so the flute often gets to play gorgeous solo melodies, but it can also assume a very playful, rustic character um, and feature in folk-like dances. I don't think I could ever pick a favourite piece. There are just so many different ones that I love for different things. Um, but lately I've been working on some flute and harpsichord sonatas by a um, composer called Thomas Rosengrave, who lived and worked in Dublin in the 18th century. So I'm going to play a short excerpt from the Allemande um, from Rosengrave's sonata number 11 in G major. <laughs> 